Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. I'm OP and in today's episode we'll be going over some of the best highlights from every matchup during day one of the world's 2023 Swiss stage. Without further ado, let's dive straight into the action. Moving in. Yeah, Summit trying to deal with this minion wave but it is just too big. They do manage to get a teleport out. Can they kill him in time? That is going to be the one for one as now the stun comes in. It's a two for one and TL trade up. Now Fuchik making his move towards the bottom side. The Q's going to land. Kumiyushi's in so much trouble. And Core JJ just said, I, I take down this team. It's my job, man. And TL coming up. You Fuchik paying some attention. No Shock Blast going to make its way into the tri brush just yet. Zayas does turn back up again. On vision. Summon us all. There it is. And now Pyoshik is coming down. There the all out comes through. The Q's going to land. And Zayas, he knows that he's dead. The Q's going to land beforehand. Push for the blades. Arrow coming in. Yeah, Ona is going to get blocked out. So Pyoshik is going to be able to take this one. The arrow's going to connect for Yun. He's going to be able to cleanse that one away. Ona's still looking for more. As the shockwave lands, Pyoshik is going to try and safeguard his way out for the hostile takeover. We'll cancel that. And Faker will grab his first of the game. Connect there from Pyoshik, but owner is going to be able to arctically assault his way out. And now this dragon is getting some attention. Wards everywhere. Arrow going to connect onto APA. The hostile takeover comes through, and there is the chaining of CC. I don't know what you're supposed to do in that moment. I think you just have to accept. Arrow going to fly through. Hits Carrier. Hits owner. And almost hits APA. This time he's going to flash it. That's uh, that's very unfortunate because uh, even though he stays alive in this instance, the might try to oh. go for a play on Zayas here. Wait, yeah, there's the scat of the week under Zayas, taking a lot of damage. The unleashed power comes from Pyoshik's gonna take away the kill. Well, not gonna be able to catch up. TL with three man strong here in the mid lane against the three of T. Oh, the flash forward from Zayas is going to be scattered. APA doesn't have a flash of his own though, as the shockwave was looking to grab Pyoshik, but they'll get the free kill on the Syndra APA, not able to make his way out. And particularly on such a long lane, between the speed up from Faker plus the speed up from Jace, as Cole goes in. Storm, that is gonna be the hostile takeover though, it's Gumiushi's just raining hell down on Core JJ, he's gonna be the first one to fall, but Summit does get the all out on the carrier, not gonna be able to bail himself out of this one. Bit too expensive, but the Q3 is gonna connect, and now Gumiushi's in trouble, the arrow's going to connect onto Young, but it was Summit that was the problem. And TL will answer back beautifully in as Goshik looking for Faker underneath the turret is going to get kicked into the wall as APA will just... Un just going to go back towards this bottom side of the map and try and clear up these minion waves. Core JJ finds Faker once again. Shattering Strike going to come through, but he's going to be pulled back by the Shockwave. The Dissonance comes in. There's the Magnus Storm as Faker is pulled forward. Can he find the Clockwork Windup? He doesn't need it because he's got Command Attack and that is gone. As you just mentioned, does not have his Flash available. The Dissonance doing a fair bit of work there because of the damage build. As Scatter the Weak is not going to quite find the man in the mid lane. Kosh going to get slowed down, but he connects the Q, and I have a feeling that even Fake is not going to be able to make his way out of this one. He's had some daring escapes before, but without Flash, Oriana doesn't exactly have too many methods. And now, the TL Baron that we were just talking about, they're going to consider it here. The rest of T1 are in the area. Faker has teleport. There's 30 seconds on TL to make this play. And if they can lock this down, it could be a huge advantage for them. They need to keep Owner out of this pit, though, as APA, he's going down low. Core JJ looking for his opportunity. Can he play bouncer? They get him out of the pit. And it's going to be Pyoshik that locks down the Baron. Can they win the fight? There is the question. Hostile takeover gets the kill, utilizing Yun to kill APA. It's a disaster for TL and Zayas. He knows it. He's flashing over walls. Yun's going to be able to pick up one, though, with these Chakrams. I have a feeling that that might be all he's going to be able to get, but let's see what he can do here. Uses the last of his mana on the Moonshot. And uh, yeah, he's in an alcove, and I don't know whether he's getting out unless it's via the Death Chamber. So there it is. Going to be the kill lock down by Zayas. Mid lane turret makes it really hard, because I do think TL, every fight should start with a pickoff. Maybe on Faker. Yeah. Yoshik deep in enemy territory. Going for it there as the kick does come through. Of course, Sonic Wave is going to connect as well. Core JJ looks for the opportunity, but the hostile takeover is there. Carrier always takes care oh. of his friends. It's Yoshik. He even goes golden. Going to be able to avoid the arrow with that. The rest of TL gets into position. This is tw 20. Means that you're only a single win away from making it towards those best of freeze. The ability to win. And, and right now, TL is looking to peel. They're hoping to get the teleport and then oh, peel. They do not want to flip this. Area is just going to get caught out of position. Call JJ Let's is go. there, and that is going to be the pickoff to start this one. Even the Rift Skull is going to be the kick on the Faker from Pyoshik. It does not stop from this man today. And Ona down to 50%. Of course, Summit's got the 
the Q3, and it's Jungle's a double gone. for APA, and that's going to be a Baron for TL. Piosic is legitimately the defending world champion, getting two kills for TL, no jungler for that's T1. That's the second Baron of the game. Two for two for Liquid. I'm giving the Swiss stage. If they can make it happen, it will be incredible. Right now, though, Baron Powerplay actually working out okay. Ooh, Summit, Summit has to be able to escape this. Trying to get out of the way, but the Glacial Prison is going to connect. The arrow is going to sail wide. He tries to all out his way through. Does still have a bit of a shield, but Faker will finish him off now. With Summoning Core, if they play the fights correctly. And I think as well, that's why Karriat also going for Radiant Virtue here on the uh, Renata. Trying Fair. to build the oh. most thankiness. Scatter the Weak trying to come forward here. Summit just that's by himself, line. finds himself. A kill the Magnus Storm under three. It's gigantic and Summit's going all out. He's going to get out of the fight as well with Kumiyushi. He's taken down Yon already. Core JJ, both of them are going to go golden. And it's T1 that just roll over the top of TL and even Summit will not be allowed to escape as Gumiyushi looking to chase after him. He's got the ward in the brush and I have a feeling don't get the clean ace because Summit stays alive, but they were that winning until they game. weren't. Chronicler, and that is going to be the Nexus turrets falling down. Our observers following the story of Summit, but it's the Nexus that needs to be addressed and T1 are going to take the game, the first game of Swiss. I wouldn't need a ladder for you, Jad, by the way, to get back up to the analyst desk, I think. That's a great way to start Worlds. Yeah, it exactly. actually is. It was an amazing game. TL played their wow. hearts out. T1 clutched up when they needed to in that final team fight. And you guys did a great job. Thanks for having me. Oh, thanks, thanks for, for coming, much. Jad. We needed you. For the Syndra to kind of prey on, of course, laning phase early should be something that Niski can really take advantage of. And then in the later stages of the game, their long range pick is actually very, very high with Scatter the Weak and then the follow up with Trisha Yeah, Bright. trying to introduce some delays. Not gonna have, uh, have too much slowing down now. Could be an angle here, will get yeah. spotted. Fudge is gonna immediately back away. Did have that ward there, but Leap striked a little bit early. That is gonna be the flash to follow up. Still gets the knock up and that is first blood with the last tick of Ignite for Chasey. Amazing follow up there. Save the second time hits here. Of course, oh. uh, Chasey not having a flash or ghost makes ganks all the more exciting. As there we go. Yeah, there it is. The Unraveled Earth comes down. Chasey going to try and get himself out of here. The Counter-Strike doesn't quite work, but he doesn't have too much more. Cataclysm going to come on through. Can he get any kills back? Elioia not going to be able to find it. Sven just uses the ultimate beautifully to survive everything. And C9 Zwen immediately grabs turret aggro, which ensures that with his ultimate, he is fine. Fudge might have to pay the price here, though. Perhaps Silasang looking for his opportunity. Grand Entrance does come through. There's the Counter-Strike, though. One heck of an ability. The Ignite comes through. Quickness going to be utilized as well. They do not want to leave anything to chance, and Elioia is going to skewer the Jacks. <laughs> They're in this game, I swear. We saw, like, one ultimate from Karzi, uh, maybe, as uh, Speaking they of go. ultimates, yeah, the Weaver's Wall going to come on through here. Is Karzi going to try and look to try and get himself out of the way, and he does so beautifully. Seismic Shove has to land if he's going to make that one work. True Shot Barrage connects as well, but he's overstepped, and Karzi's going to get punished by Berserker. We could say baited by Blabber. Berserker, the items that he needs, and he reliably carries, has been a bit of a mantra for C9. Another Weaver's Wall going to come on through here as Blab is going to show up. Chasey in a whole host of trouble. The Needlework doing a fair bit though here as Fudge going to try and get out of there. Sven going to be the one to lock it down though. And a bit of the question mark. I think the answer to that question is you got to kill. It going very even. Yeah. We'll see if C9 can build themselves up a Drake lead here. That's going to be that Hextech Drake. And it will be secured there. No. Good smite from Blabber. As Niski's going to have to flash. Fudge is going to flash immediately after him as well. Blast Cone, he wants to get over and he'll find it! Beautifully solo killed by Fudge. I think can just keep stacking uh, these resistors. Ooh, he goes! That's a flash right on top of Niski. It gets a flash in response. Good reaction there from the mad mid laner to get himself out of the way. Weaver's Wall going to come through here. It's in trade for that one. But the knockoff does come through here from Sven, who wants to make a fight out of this. Hasn't actually altered just yet and is now looking to potentially go for a reset, get the health back. Just take the trade. They've got Flash and Ghost out of Kazi. Now to summon a trade favorable for C9, but the positioning much better from that. They have control of the river and they will be able to deny the dragon stacking, not allowing C9 to pick up a soul point. And Niski and Karzi don't have flash available. I actually like this. I think playing aggressively in this way is great. That Wardo not blocked by the pink, I think. Or actually, yeah. no, it is. Yeah. We're fine. MS is going second, to be able to see that there is a ward in this pit, but I don't know what they're going to be able to do about this because it's going down so quickly. Berserk is even the one that gets the last hit on the Baron because he doesn't
just so much damage. Chasey now looking for the needlework here on the m &S. This is the matchup that he wanted in the first place. But of course, cassante has got the dash. He'll get himself out of there. And Fudge is just doing just dash pushing. things in the bottom lane. Oh, dear man. They deny the dragon. Twice, and they're completely fine. Oh, Scatter the week does come through. There's a headbutt pulp, though. Still, he's not scared as they have the seismic shot. El Yoya able to get himself out of the way. Keeps the cow alive there with the ultimate, but now Fudge has found the back line, the quickness and the grand entrance having to be used by Hilly. Get himself that out of dodge, but still C9 are pushing. They are not stopping. And with this Baron, this tower is not looking long for the world. And Sven, still just fine. The Unbreakable Will working out so beautifully, and Blabby just heads towards the top lane. They are taking everything from Matt. And for Mad. Maybe try and punish the indecision there from C9, right? The moment you know you're spotted, doesn't end up working out the wall. Is it going to be enough to keep him away? It looks like it is. Yeah, it is. Flag not going to do enough damage to contest the smite as Hillisang taking a bit of damage here as well. And MNS just going to be able to press that W. CC, not something that he's too worried about. Kazi is going to be pressing every single time. It's Blabber getting a catch. It's Sven going in. And the, even though the last engage didn't quite end up working out, Dragon still goes over to C9, so I don't think it's going to be too sad to oh, cancel. Oh, yeah, he's going to get canceled. Seismic Shove going to come through, and I guess you can just engage on a Hillisung if he's that far up. And C9 now with a 5v4 advantage and a Baron that has just returned to the Rift. They're going to look to grab their second, and that might be the final nail in the coffin for Mad. That is going to be another engage. The headbutt to push El Yoya away. Not going to be out of flag, drag, flash, or anything to steal that one as MS. He's also able to keep himself alive. Kazi going to push forward one more time as El Yoya looking for it, but Berserk is just flashing after him. The seismic shoves. They've been amazing this game from Blabber. That's going to mean that El Yoya can't do anything. And Chasey just wondering why his kill feed's just red. From El Yoya, and Matt just not able to really generate any type of aggressive pressure. And yeah, the trades well, that work out. Hillisang looking for an option here, but Blabber is just going to go gold, and Hillisang is going to go down as well. The first Nexus turret has been taken. North America in their first showing here in the Swiss stage against the E. What is it again? LEC, EMEA. Yeah, let's go I got with you. LEC. They're going to be able to take them down. It's LCS that are ahead, Chronicler. And you know, best of ones. Are, uh, are inherently volatile, but after the first two, I gotta say, LCS, uh, not looking too bad. Not looking too bad at all. I mean, it was almost TL taking down T1. You know and now it is C9 giving hugs to Niski uh, as well, of course, uh, formerly with C9. They are going to move to 1 0. You already said how incredibly important it is to. Well, um, and also an incredible amount of comfort. Like, if you had asked me what the most played champions. Um, this year, uh, I would assume. Uh, Peanut moving on over. Has he does flash. not have the ultimate just yet. Vault Breaker going to come through. He's going to connect it this time around, but there is a Counter Strike and Peanut tanking the turret. He has to flash to get out of the way. And Kiai is like, bring it on. We'll see what else you can do. But there it is. First Blood comes down, but it's immediately answered. Doran overestimating his tank in is there and really good views of Counter Strike there by Kiaya. Maybe, maybe. It I, almost I, was really it, good. Yeah. Uh, uh, but then he's the not tower tanky does come through. All right. Peanut. We are going to be able to find the snare and Peanut going to go down. Levi collects a second here for Gam in the early game. And this is exactly what we have been told. Sit here. The light's on his way. Yeah, Kiaya is an opportunity as the Vault Breaker being charged here for Peanut is going to come on through. Pallet going to be fighting Doran. Peanut still. Just in the fog of war, Doran's going to deliver them. The Haymaker comes on down, and Peanut, he is going to finally start fighting, but he's straight into a Pop Blossom. He manages to pick up the kill onto the Jacks, and now it's Delight. It's Toby, and it's Gen G that are striking back in the battle. It was almost so good for Gam. But Gen G reigns supreme in the end. Well, Gen G really playing with fire there, as oh. all of this. Cardi is going to look for the snare, but doesn't quite get it. Dash just long enough for yeah. door. Souls are concerned, but Hextech and Infernal are probably people's favorites oh, as far as the other two. Oh, yeah, Levi could be in a little bit of trouble. Pallet is in the area. Slater could come on down, but there's the Vault Breaker to connect on to Levi. Headbutt Bolt does come down, and it's all about picking your poison. Choose your target, and Peanut has said, Pallet, you are dead. Never mind. We'll be able to get a 
Nutter turret uh, might also die. Does, uh, does spot Levi here, so he should be playing respectfully. Uh, he's Cassante with flash, though, so... Oh, there's the flash kick to land onto Doran. He gets stunned up as well, and Doran's now trying to escape, but it's not going to happen. Yeah. Levi going to lock down that kill, as he was saying. You knew he was there. Doran! This have happened before. Um, he was he was oh. playing to his limits, you know? Uh, something like that. As, yeah, Trovi is going to teleport in. Looks for the opportunities. Burnt the ult already. Kiaya out of mana almost entirely, and there's the charm. Kill going to go down, and that is going to be Chovy's second in this 1v1. Yeah, what we are seeing, though, and, and this is, well, Genji, I think, really only does this as oh, hold up. Another hip up pulp is going to come through, and another charm will land. Cardi's going to be able to get that flash off, but there's the cease and assist. Pop Blossom going to come through, but Peanut is going to be tanky enough. He wanted to give the kill to Chovy, but it is not going to happen. Oh, another turret shot, and Chovy will survive. So it's fine. So the Everfrost, oh, just barely. The heels of Pallet were in trouble there. And Peanut will be able to lock down this Rift Herald, of course. Gam with full information. Levi looking for that opportunity. There's another safeguard kick onto Chovy, but um, it's, a, it's an Ari. So he's able to press R, get out a few times. But they do put it on cooldown, and it could give an opportunity for Gam to get themselves their first strike of this game. Yeah, I would have loved to see Pallet maybe go for a, a Pallet. All right. Yeah, Pallet um, is just going to get knocked into the air, and Pei is going to be able to lock that one down. My goodness. The Akathian rain is terrifying from this Kaiser. And they're going to push uh, the, this Rift Herald through two turrets, as it turns out. Kiaia also getting down relatively low towards this top side, but Doran going to find the flash. The all-out comes through, and he just chops up the jacks. And after some early attention from the rest of his team, Doran says, I can take care of it by myself. And uh, when there is no front line on the main enemy team, this build, very impressive, double TP coming yeah. in. That is a uh, solo lane sandwich here is the charm point. Blank range is going to connect onto Slater, but he's going to be able to cleanse Flash to get himself out. But is it going to be enough? The answer is no, it's Peanut. Comes on through with the cease and desist. And Desire is going to be taken down. Pallet's now trying to stay alive. Doran will be able to lock that one down. And meanwhile, Gam is being disintegrated. They do manage to take down Pays, but I think that is going to be the end of the good news for the BCS squad. And Gen G will find all but Cardi in this one. Uh, manageable, Atlas. Whoa. Uh, you know me, I, I'm not one for no. strong and words. Slater is now not going to get vault broken here by Peanut, but the Featherstorm does have to come through, but he's not going to get caught by the pop lots of the knockoff from Delight. What was that? They do manage to get yet another kill for Kiaia, but it is once again not the story they were looking for, as he will eventually go down. It's a double for Pays in the end of it all, and this time it'll be the ace for Gen G. And Baron overizes like that. Like, Delight, man, what an incredible start to his world's run, because he was one of the players that didn't necessarily perform as well when we got to MSI. So it's good to see him starting things off with a play like this. Iconic to see Peanut miss his flash Q, but it doesn't end up mattering at all, right? The amount of CC damage available. Gen G is so far ahead at this point in yeah. items that um, even if, if, if they lose one or two members, you can probably clinch out that fight. But if you do get everyone grouped... That long today, Chronicler. We're looking to try and end it as soon as possible. The Vault Breaker going to be channeled here. Picking your target is going to be important as Peanut is just going to do use anything. it in another direction. And yeah, there is a head buff pulverize onto Cardi and into the back line goes Pallet. The Haymaker does buy a little bit of time and the Pop Blossom's decent, but Gen G, the wallets are too heavy at this stage of the game and they are just going to rip through Gam. Slater, the last one to go down. It's a double for Chovy. They'll deal with these Nexus turrets and the Nexus. No call of the day here, 22 and a half minutes. And Genji, I think I saw a JDG uh, icon there at the end Ooh, as they dove like into that. the side, into the uh, into the fountain because Genji looking good here today. The fact that with the Swiss format we can have a Genji JDG best 18 fight win, right? It is very short range, and that's in theory where picks like Zaya and Cassiopeia might. Oh, uh, well, just this going is a to flip. immediately get towards this top side. It's a big wave stacked up, and Kanavi has now dealt with the crab. Could be a 2v2 incoming very, very quickly. Adam's just going to flash for it. Oh. They find the silence, and 369 will be put down. First blood to the Garen. Going to be 
able to get the cancel as well. And Adam, uh, virtue of his ignite, does not have TP. So he's gonna try and just eat this. He does the flash. Oh, he, he does have courage. Hit. He's got courage. He's not gonna get knocked up. He's brave. Oh, uh, this time around, and this is exactly what we were talking about. Um, he's not out of the woods just yet, though. And there's the knock up. Does find the silence here under 369, who may fall, but the damage to the lane is the biggest problem. He's not. BDS look like they might want to still go for this. They do have LeBrov there. Yeah, Kanabi just immediately going to get ulted, silenced as well. It's going to be difficult as the ult comes down. Cataclysm is there, but Adam, he's not scared of a ring of rocks. 369 now using the Bellows Breath to try and deny the CC, but it's not going to deny the knockup. And Nuke's going to grab that kill. It's now 3-1 to one to BDS. The, the W added to the Dragons, but they do actually need to get the Dragons. And we haven't seen a 5v5 yet, and that is where many teams are unable to match up to what JDG offers. This turret though is gone, yep, and Shao's here. They're looking for the Demolish proc, and now 369 is in trouble. However, Kanavi, Knight, both of them moving on up. And Adam just gets himself out of there. Did you know you can? We need to hold off of on any really big judgment until we see a 5v5. I want to see JDG Rula do some things yeah. with some champions in the area. It for. As, all right, not going to get the knockup onto Sheo. He's going to answer with his ult. The Everfrost is fantastic, and now the Ram comes in. Petrifying Gaze comes down, though. Kanavi's in trouble, but he survives for so long. One for one so far. The Bellows breath coming through, and Nuke will be pounded by the hammer of the Blacksmith. And LeBrock just headbutted out of the fight. JDG striking back. Case in point there, they want to give the time to Nuke, who I think is going to have an item finish. A lot of TP wards available, particularly that control ward there in the jungle. Yeah, Adam, just standing on vision. He's not too worried about it, but there's the Hex Flash. Pulverize, and he's just going to be taken down back to the Drake that they'd started earlier, and now it's a four versus five. BDS just going to have to get out of here. They will have to give that one up, and Adam, unfortunate, didn't have his Flash available or anything like that. 69 turning up. Mid lane, but not going to be able to find Brownie oh. as Knight. All right, will he get the bad news? Flash is available for Adam, and he will not need it because Cease and Assist does come on down. LeBron looking for Knight. He's burning, he's ticking. It's not going to be enough, but Sheo's there with a Flash Smite to take down the Ari. In the meantime, though, um, the Rift Herald's going to crush this outer turret in mid and is possibly going to get another Ooh, charge as yeah. well. So you kill Knight, you'll probably be able to get an inner as well. So I think by the end, it will be a net positive. If they can get this turret, it'll be a positive gold trade for BDS. That is three flashes, oh, sorry, two flashes, three ultimates invested. Uh, you give up a lot of mid control. The fact you're able to get that inner though means that in terms of gold, not the end of the world. Shale going in really aggressively here. Yeah, really aggressively. Uh, he's going to get knocked up. Crowny and LeBron are going to turn up here. Shale should be taken down, but can they actually stand a chance in this fight as the Ram is going to pass by Crowny? They will be able to escape. Of course, pretty slippery is good old Rakan. So LeBron's and allows him so much more background access. And yeah, I think if you're if you're JDG, start it up. Well, immediately it is going to get spotted here, LeBron. Getting himself towards that backline as Sheo immediately turned on. His Vault Breaker's on cooldown. The charm comes in. The layering of CC is perfect. And Knight says goodbye, enemy jungler. It's time to take down the Baron. And that's going to deny the rest of BDS. And stopping this Baron is going to be a heck of a tall order. 369 taking a bit of damage, but he's just buying space. Adam spinning, but I don't think he's winning. Is now rulers on the board with a kill on Crowny. LeBrov goes down as well. And Adam's just going to have to get out of there. Petrifying Gaze is not named quite well enough at this point in time. Is now rulers looking for a little bit more. Noxious Blast not connecting. The knockup is there. And Nuke goes down as well. JDG, they just kill all of them. It's a clean to 90%, close to almost touching the bottom in favor of JDG. And BDS fought valiantly. Might be trying to go for one more play here. 369 isn't here right now. Yeah, there is the cease and desist. Silence is down onto Kanavi, but he just turns it immediately. The Jarvan going to be the first one to go down. Sheo trying to get himself out of there. LeBron is going to be the sacrifice, and Nuke's going to go down as well. And now Ruler kind of taking matters into his own hands alongside Knight, who collects a triple kill, tidying up the fight. Plus, JDG going to push on here with a draft like this. You're given some leeway, and man, did they use it. Well, I tell you what, BDS, they at least made it interesting, especially in the early stages of that game, and 
You know, there's that Xerxes moment. There's the gods can bleed, that sort of stuff. They're not bleeding as far as their score line here in the tournament, but they at least did in the early game of this. D plus actually invested a couple ganks up towards the top side. Maybe Canyon's priority will be making sure the bot gets through laning phase largely unharmed. Okay. Because you look at the scaling, you look at the range that Ballless, they have. of course, at the moment in 2023. 8-0, uh, by the way. Fun stat for you. It's pretty hot as uh, Mickey setting up on a depth instant cleanse away, but Willis save his life. Ignites down. A couple of autos too. Kellen with a flash away as well. And G2's bottom lane matches it! Oh my god! This team's pretty hot! Han Summers Draven! He's in a bit of trouble too. G2 looking to replicate across the map. Just waiting as here we go. The ends go marching one by one. And yikes, says hurrah! With Broken Blade on top as well. That stun out. There's no flash from the trade before. Cannon's like, just make it stop. And G2 with another with a 2 0 start. He does get himself another play. Cannon showing great respect and caps on the roam here. Wow. Most agile Oriana we've ever seen. Kana, his flash is back up and available, but he gets stunned up, not going to use it. He knows he's dead as Caps picks up his first kill and G2 continuing to hold that top side. Cap save. D plus, though, know they have a window to start off this dragon. Caps hasn't had an opportunity to base, doesn't have his mythic. Do G2 still want to fight this? Yes, they do. Yes, they do. With the ulti from Yike in there, but the Magnus Storm and the boot bag! Showmaker, playmaker! All you blinkers down there, stand down. It's a double over to death. You can't underestimate the man in the jungle. Canyon finds a fantastic engage. It should be very difficult for DK to force their way in. And we talked about D, D plus being first on the objective. There are now all the saplings in position that are yep. going to be extra bit of poke coming out from the AP Maokai. And you know what? D plus is just saying, we're fine. You can have this. We already took one Drake for you. We've slowed down the dragon stacking. And uh, we don't need to fight Draven right now. Trinity Force. You just you have know, to the guess. Draven stacks, I have to wait? guess. I have to wait till Observer gets there. Showmaker again, threatening it. But Caps holds onto the flash. That's a big brain move as Teleport going in. G2 want to die this and with Yai golfing in. Showmaker has nowhere to go. Broken Blade forces his flash, gets booped away. But there you go. Adoration for the crowd again. One more to hit the boot as Hans Summers already cashed in. But he's looking for more money. Trying to roll the dice as Mickey X tries to get them out of there. Berserk for the time being. Running back in. G2 want to re engage. It's chaotic, but it's going in G2's favor. They'll find another kill. Make it two. Four down on the side of D. Deft is continuing to push in mid lane. But it started with Showmaker looking for that play on to Win probability powered by AWS before, showing that G2 might have this in the bag. Now, of course, you're saying they could have get it to the finish line, but massive gold lead now to 5K. The flash ball from Kellen doesn't work out. Re-engaged by Yike. The ends are out, and here's Broken Play for the stun down. That might be a tanky Alistar, but out of the farmyard he goes. He becomes a patty again. Han Summer runs forward, gets more money in the bank. This guy's interest rate. Summer stocks right now because they are going up. G2 see this as an opportunity to start the Baron, but it's also a great opportunity for D+. Here we go, the Baron is kicked off. Well, no ulti from Death as they're stoned out by the Whirling Death over the wall. Kana can't do too much, and it all comes down to Are they going to flip this? Are they going to flip this? Be very please don't flip so. it, G2. Uh, you're saying please no, but in goes Canyon looking for it. The all-in, oh my god! They've set up DK to smack him down, and they get the Baron! Then he has said no! running for his life, he's next to go down, and all of us... They should be able to convert this into a fight, which is what they do, they try to be patient, but look at this engage, Canyon soaks up onto three, Kana comes in, Showmaker completely safe on the back line, the three of them, Canyon, Showmaker and Kana, just tear G2 apart, with Hansama dead, he's where all the gold is right now, and it's a clean team fight win, it's a Baron secure... We'll deal with it at the moment. Dragon gonna reset at least, give them a bit more time, but time is so good for DK. Look at Canyon finding a flank once again. Broken Blade looking to zone him out. There's the poke again, he hits three, he jumps in. Canyon flush for that. Won't get the steal and won't get over the wall. A bit of an oopsie as Y. T plus are using their range fantastically, and they're gonna start this one off. Showmaker on the Azir will melt through this. They don't have access to the Baron right now. G2 have chosen to reset. They don't have any vision. Yikes, this the is only gone. one nearby. It's just gone, Betty. It's gone. It's just gone. 
It's a blind Baron. G2 had an idea, but not in the position to do anything about it. It's death by himself. Dominus now pop looking for death and to stun him up. He cleanses the wave. A broken blade has brought the Armada to him. Flashes away. He might have done his job as he goes golden, but he should be dying here. But Slice and Dice, he's out of there. But hang on, he needs the reset and he can't find it. However, now with the dragon up and the Renata ulti out, it might be okay as G2 bring it to a 50 50 and win it out. Ocean Soul there. The Jike, for some reason, flashes upward. But G2 have a permanent buff in this game as there is also a Grave labelled out for Mickey as he drops down again. That's in kind by getting themselves three kills. And now it might continue on as Caps is caught out between his two. Turret Shockwave's there, but it's late. There's the Magnet Storm. Chains of Corruption. The Shockwave eventually comes through to correct myself as Caps flushes. No! Death with the timing's huge. Kellen gets him out of position. I'm not sure Death should have died, but if it comes a one for one. Impressive play there by Caps. In a four versus one, he's able to trade Deft to work somehow. Are they looking for the TP oh, flank? Yes, are. they are. Well, again, if they can win this G2, might be able to flip things again as Jike sends out the ulti. Dominus from Broken Blade on the side. Canyon caught on the wing here. Showmaker puts up his turret, but it won't save Canyon's life. He's buying a bit of time, and Showmaker starts ordering away. But remember, they have Ocean Soul. There's another cash in for Hunt. Some of the flash from Broken Blade. It's a pulverize, but Kellen can't do a thing. Out goes Showmaker. In goes G2. And we've swung again. It's chaos. G2 versus D+. Bad things from both sides. <laughs> but it is delivering well in said. some super entertaining league. Yike will begin the Baron. G2, for again. the love of God, don't let this one go. It's going to flip again, isn't it? Well, maybe if DK aren't there, it won't be a flip. As Yike sticks on it, Baron's going to go down this time. No harm in the only one hit and enough space is drawn. Here we go. It's being started. But as you said, Kellen's still too low. The handshake zoning out, the poke coming through. G2 aren't letting them walk in, but Kana has an influence from the top side. Look at the lifesteal from Hansama, though. Well, hang on, Kellen's just walking into danger, though. Hansama cashes in! Kellen is meat to the slaughter again as that whirling death hurts. And thank you, says G2, for giving us the Elder Dragon. They weather the storm from D+. They're able to mitigate the pole. Oh. It's the fourth <laughs> Baron! But I can't count. But with the last pick of the Elder, once more, Yike sends out nature. The ends of the forest don't find their mark, but at least it zones out for a second inhibitor. So the base is in complete favor of Australia. It's like two hours away. Over the wall, Mickey might be caught out. Hang on a minute, this Renata separated, but it might be okay. Magnet Storm out, but that Renata ulti is insane. Running forward is Broken Blade to zone out as DK is still looking for that clutch factor, but Hunt Summer won't let Kellen anywhere near. Go back to the farm. G2 zoning them out continuously, and they might have it, Venus. They might just with the shockwave bring him back the playmaker. Han Summer getting all the money, but Caps is getting my heart. To the eyes of the reigning world champion, and says, Today is not your day. He'll force him into the G8, and they're looking for the Nexus. The first seed from the LEC holds on to their name, saying it was back and forth. It was a little bit messy, but hey. G2, they're versatile, they're volatile, and they're starting 1-0 in the Swiss stage against the LCK4. What a crazy... We'll obviously wait for the final You spot. tell me, man, is that too dangerous? What do you think I'm gonna say? I think the answer's yes. <laughs> yeah, I think it is indeed. But hey, big scary in those regional finals versus EDG. They made plays this early on and with FBI at half HP with no summoners as well. Wei Wei stacks him against the wall. I'm seeing deja vu. And Weibo bring in first blood at three minutes in. Ignar now in trouble as well. Wei Wei waiting for those cooldowns. There's the flash matched out. Ignar latched on to second skin about to proc. He bops him in. Wei Wei might be in trouble, but he shoves him back. And Light gets the kill. A 2 0 start. For his potential. They're going to turn on for contract. Shove doesn't work, but against the wall it does. The bot back in. Chris teleports in that one. Ignar gets a double pulverized. Slight now runs on him for the damage. FBI out one way. Ignar the other. Summoners were burnt before, but at least like a match. Xiaohu is now participating. He runs in without ulti. Ignar is slowed down. And Weibo are this deep this early on. Venius, this is K. Ready to overheat. And Dokula gets out of there while the bottom side of the map is relieved somewhat stopping any kind of objective lead on top of what we've already got. A small bit of reprieve for NR. A very difficult early game. 
but this is Weibo's game right now. Oh, oh no! Oh, oh no! On, on the turret! Oh. The Spring King returns later in the summer as now the contracts. Hang on a minute, no way! He flashes away, Xiao doesn't burn his own. Come at me, he shouts. With the hell, it's matched though. Crisp out with his summoner. However, this is getting collapsed on Weiwei. In the right place at the right time yet again. The Fates call though, saves the day. Weibo still looking to contest. Hang on, Xiao's running in. He's got his flash available. No way! They went to Narnia and back again in a couple of minutes! Contract is down. Weibo cannot be stopped. It's like they've got their own personal train. This is the debut that you wanted, I imagine. JDG looking a little skeptical in the early game against BDS, but they did come back with some fantastic team fighting. Weibo looking dominant, but Palafox TP's in. Well, Chris is out of mana trying to zone out. Xiaohu without an ulti, it's a good time as Dragon goes down, but Weibo are looking for the re-engage somehow. They don't have the resources to play with, and Ignar knows it, but his flash isn't up and available. What can they do as Xiaohu has... Whether it be small or large. Told you. What can he do here? Emperor's Divide, Glide, oh, Contracts! Interrupts, matches a flash, they just need a kill! NRG just need a kill and they've got it. Palafox from downtown. And NRG are finally alive. But I'm happy to be optimistic about this team, especially when Palafox, a bit of a king getting the kill here, but meanwhile, oh, no. Dogla in a bit of trouble. That turret's gonna melt, that's non-existent. Light running in with his boys, and the Shy ready to cook. I've been loving the food here in Korea, so let's see what Dogla tastes like. Juicy. Alongside Rookie. Semi-finals at Worlds, remember? Against FPXs. We'll pause on that. This is what's happening now. Look at the lines of scrimmage laid down, but the Shy's not dead. They don't have enough damage. Don't do knocks him up. They're trying. Equalizer down. Maybe they do. They do indeed. But Baron goes down because of him. So there's the trade as Palafox now the next target. Flushes away to the skies to get him out of there. And that's what it costs to kill the Shy. Everything, the kitchen sink, the front door, all the new kitchenette and the fridge, Vettius. The Shield of Daybreak lands. NRG is there to back up, but Christmas Leona taking up as see you later. Wait, wait. Sends Ignar packing as the flash over to bring contracts back on in. They used everything in the last place. Xiaohu gets one from FBI on the side as well. But as contracts drops down, Xiaohu buys some time and sets up for kill number two. Who's it gonna be? Ignar. He's got his flash available, but Oh my has the flash. Palafox covered, but it didn't matter. That threat from long range is too much to bear as the Shy waits for them to reconvene. It was literally just an ultimate from the Shy. Yep. He just single-handedly forced NRG back. And that will be the Baron. A dominant performance from the entirety. Wall contracts not getting the shove back though. The Shy will walk it out as Weibo like, all right, you want to go for our top lane and we're going to try and end the game. And there's the equalizer to stop three, four backs really. Solar Flare as well, another backstop. Hang on a minute. Weibo are just ending the game with the Baron up minions. The Shy's done his job. NRG are going to find a pick on the Chris, but as Dokla gets back, he's shattered as well. Ulti's a little early from Xiaohu, but Palafox gets burned down. Nonetheless, with their debut at World, Weibo are tearing apart North America. Peace by peace by peace. Weibo in under 30 minutes are destroying the first seed of NA. I'm sorry to the LCS, but WBG might be the fourth seed, but they are here to play. A dominant performance. We've been seeing a lot today, right? Engage comps versus poke comps. And when you have Ezreal and uh, Jace and Talia playing around these objectives that can very quickly balloon a game out of control. Like this, maybe. Don't be surprised when you see Razork looking for like those level three, level four invades. Are they threatening a dive here? It's Tarzan's a on the way. Wave. I mean, I'd be scared. There's a flash straight away. Zekka gonna flash away straight up. He's got some help though. Tarzan's coming in and they haven't done the damage. Oh no, Oscar and gonna get knocked up. First blooded and Tarzan now in a beautiful spot as Razork dodges away from the turret aggro. But this guy is gonna hammer you down. He's the king after all. Razork running for the hills, trying to slow down, but if Scout doesn't kill him, Tarzan sure will give it over to the Azir and LNG punish. That's for in their own way so far from our two teams as Scout. Might get hit here, Trimby setting it up, Shattering Strike, he reads it, but he won't get the Shifting Sands away. Instead, he gets knocked back on in. Scout jukes it out, okay. Thinks he's going one way, but goes the other. Yeah, the E wasn't quite interrupted by Trimby. But you know, like, it's understandable why they should be rated that high. And like, there are many analysts out there that do rate them that high, right? A scout, ulti's out. Okay, there's a flag and drag. Cataclysm down. 
This is why the mid jungle of LNG is so fierce. Tarzan and Scout, they're pros. It's a clean execution. And what else is there to say? Humanoid burned the flash, made it easy for Tarzan to lock him down. Now the Herald is here. Trimby and Razork are going to try and mitigate the damage. But the damage is done. TP is here as well. Not only the pace being comfortable, but a two kill Azir here for Scout as Hung pops a quickness. Now looking to knock up Razork. Zoning him out, waiting for that flash out. He tried to predict it, and the patience is there. Scout with another. Stop giving him kills. You can't, man. He's. The LPL's MVP for a reason, and it's crazy to see this synergy. Scout. He's deciding to play ball with Tarzan. Peekaboo! Flag and drag doesn't work. He's like Cataclysm instead. Locked down as Fnatic might punish this. LNG, have they gone too far? Hung now, roams on in. Quickness is not available, but has the engage, and uh, Fnatic are just going to have to watch him walk out. Maybe. Scout now on his way. The engage is there. Good flick back, but onto Razok. Scout boops him away. And straight away, his fourth kill. Now Trimby, Oscar in, in a bad spot. Azika might turn this into a solo kill. This Jax doing it by himself. Jumps on in. The rest of LNG watching a scout. Gets his flash out as well. Trimby might be next on the menu, boys. As LNG are 5-0 and zero up. Noah in trouble, but is it Gala really? His humanoid makes a roam down. And finally, it looks like Fnatic are going to strike. It is a trade across the map, though. Unfortunately, well, fortunately for Fnatic, they get two. Fnatic are able to get... Fnatic can't be understated, but it depends on this next fight as Dragon goes over to LNG. We come back from the replay into a live party. A good charm in the end, as well as Razork's burning down, because Gala is now going to have his say. Demacia returns with a massive arena in the mix. Three more dead, and LNG continue to fight fire with their own fire. Three kills and a Dragon to boot. In the end, three to two. Just look at this replay down towards Dragon, where they're able to find three quick kills. Oh, 62 HP after the smite from Razork means that Tarzan can easily pick that one up. Humanoid was immediately forced to disengage, but he was just run down by Scout while the other... We're not running our heads against the wall. It's not the level two gank. It's just concise league, as you were saying, where Scout is so strong, but at least Trimby wants to change that, but the feathers fly out. Straight away, they regret it as Tarzan dives under turret, flashes out. Great seismic shot, Razork. Welcome back. He finds a kill as Fnatic uh, mitigating the dive. Well, LNG, a bit of a mistake. They can be control, but sometimes they can throw it all away. And Razork, no. Scout with the turret out. Great, oh. but the flick back's even better. Razork has woken up to the show. Well, Trimby finds a fantastic engage. If nothing else, it buys a little bit of time for Fnatic. Will Noah know? Ooh. Close. Gala chooses to take the safer path. Walks away. Up. LNG on spawner like, hey, Scout still does a quadrillion damage. It's dead. Look at how fast that dies. Run. Are they going to get their hung zoning out? Nope. And we are right back to square one. As that's a good flick back, however. Razork now on a killing spree. But at the cost of Baron, it is still a net positive for LNG. Yeah, I mean, they took that so fast. It was such Two from one. 1.3k. I mean, less than the Baron itself is worth, so... Fnatic can take pride as the all-ins air scout shuffles back. Humanoids caught in the middle, but that, Hang that on. is a great magnet storm from Tremby. Welcome back, but Zika gets in with the counter-strike. They have to take him out, however, as scout still not dead. Oscar in and at half HP, wants to re-engage, but Garland now on the wing. He flashes on him, but the cleanse is there. He'll get the kill, he'll survive, and Noah's now in trouble as the turret must go first. But Tarzan backs away. It's a messy one, but it's a one for two as Ooh. Gala flashes away almost the two for two. It's looking for the 1v1. The rest of Fnatic getting engaged on or at least looked at once again. They have the inside track to mid, but the mini wave thin down as Tarzan goes the all in, but misses. Cataclysm's down, but Razork survives. Meanwhile, on the back of it, Trimmy gets a magnus but no one's hit Gala. No one can hit Scout. LNG are looking for the finishing touches, and just while Fnatic we're looking closer to bringing this back. They are separated. That blast going a little bit troll. But over the wall, Scout is legendary with Gala looking for another kill. He holds out. Next is Razork. And ladies and gentlemen, LNG return to the powerhouse. Some of these fights look so close for Fnatic, but they're just oh. too far behind. Scout will pick up another one. Humanoid is the last man standing. They've been commanding they've been decisive and they've been clean we talked about the comp right you know you've got Zaya, you've got azir 
Look at the elements of play that they can choose to play from. As Zika goes between, there's the Weaver's Wall to separate, but LNG have flag drags, and the thank you, ma'ams. The charms there knocked up. Trimby is in a bouncy castle, but he ain't four years old. That man gets out of there straight away, but scout again. That's our MVP, but as he goes golden, Fnatic are trying to get the shutdown. Zika jumps back in. Scout still lives. Gala lives. Everyone from LNG sitting there. The man who's a pentakill king is looking down two more. A triple in the bag as Razork tries to do it again, at least getting one. Onto Zika, the feathers are out. The inhibitor down, Razork next up, but Scout takes it, and he deserves it. A double for the mid lane legend, and LNG hold up to their name. They won't be dropping to EU second seed. They'll be holding the LPL rep high as a Three LPL teams find themselves victorious today. And LNG do it in commanding fashion, sub 30 minutes. Yep. But it, this was a perfect representation of how LNG play. Patient, collected, and just, they are phenomenal at punishing your mistakes. The way that the whole team reacts to anything is just fantastic. It feels like that their eyes are glued to the minimap at all times with the way in which they move around the map and they find opportunities. This is going to be a scary team to play against because... Yep. Drafts, I think that 4KT, right? On my end, you have lands on something that can roam, BDD on something that can impact the map. Only point of worry for me is how well is Keen individually going to perform because I do think Aatrox kind of needs these pop-off moments. And how is that mid-jungle 2v2 for Cousin BDD? I mean, this team skirmishes all the time. Shouldn't held on to his ulti. Finn has his with Flash as well. Herald's going to go down, but look at the Shock Blast damage. Zoning the eye while aiming onto Elk. The cleanse out immediately. The Flash is there. Forward he goes. Second skin. First blood for aiming. Take that, BLG, he says. And aiming, getting... On takes away the, the uh, Blast Cone as well. KT looking at this one. Elk's tagged on the back end. Lahan's looking for the engage. Cards is there. Teleport as well. Elk immediately holds and he's about to turn into Flubber for the time being. I mean, Cuz is out of action, but can he rejuvenate? No. And the engage from on is massive as well. Quickness out. KT burning flashes left, right, center, but should now twist it advance. Aiming's going to drop down. And just as we're singing the praises of KT, BLG fight back. Really big play there by BLG, able to turn around the engage from KTKT, seemingly not on the same page. And crucially there, Keen's team... Keen was able to both alleviate a lot of the damage that was done in terms of CS because Bin TP'd away, while also picking up, a, I think it was one plate, maybe two. Uh, he had not gotten a whole lot done, is on. Okay, Kaz gonna be lured in, but this is pretty good for KT. On tries to jump on down. Remember, Kaz has no passive, but On has bitten off way too much. The aggro gets punished, and KT know just what to do. This time around, going Again. in on their own works. Oh, show knows! All right, Kaz back on in. And look at the follow-up. Lahens in form today as BDD joins in. This map movement from oh. the Zac is on point. Elk, reinforcements are on the way. Yago is almost there. I don't know if that's enough to actually Kaz call the play. Doesn't, yeah, doesn't need the passive, does he? Elastic slingshot now that it's down. Oh, Elk can feel happy for the time being, but Yagao gets zoned out. KT still putting on the prep game, like they've already done. As Teleport comes through, I guess I want to try five. and force it around the Dragon Chronicler. It's going to start off with the Magnus Storm down, but on. It's only other one. It's Keen as well. There's Cuz again, right in the back as Elk sends the feathers out to Asgard. Keen's already picked up the kill to make him go zoom zoom as Aiming's in as well. On to Elk, almost finds the it's kill. Going in. BLG are running for their lives. They don't know what they've run into. And uh, initially when a TP came in, I was a little worried for Keen. Yep. A uh, BLG looking ready to respond, but it felt like only On was actually in a position to do some damage towards this Aatrox. And then that counter engage from Kuz, the amount of threat he was able to put on the back line, immediately forced a response. Hex, Kuz uh, actually getting an in gold. Not really, he hasn't really been picking up a lot of the kills. Zelk might be in trouble here. BLG bottom line, it depends. There's a flash from Lahan's instant reaction. Inhuman, maybe, but there's a flash away as Cuz follows up the double trouble on re engages. But it's dangerous with the feathers flying on to Cuz. A huge as BLG are trying to take the fight. Keen in the middle of whoop whoop. Sean looking for the flash, finds a kill. BLG back in this has been now finally shows up the all out there. BDD caught out as well. And you can never nap against BLG. 
And Elk knew something. Champion diversity shoot up still as all aiming is level 12. Yeah, because Bin is confident in this matchup. He's winning it out. But until the ult comes through, until aiming comes through, now you're in trouble. Bin getting out. He's got about a million dashes, but is it enough for aiming? KT forced his flash. Stalling. They're still doing so much work. There's the flash from aiming. One more. And Bin's down. But KT have over aggressed here as you go. Trying to jump in. But big brother Keen helps out. Aiming kites it. KT. Welcome to the party, Ooh. pal. The elk pullback is huge, though. BDD coming in clutch, but now Shun ready to cover with the ulti of his own cuts. Covering again. These guys are friends forever. As On brings them together, but it's up to Elk to bring the damage he needs to get close. But he's scared of Lahens, of Cuz, of even aiming in the wing. It's messy. It's a two for two in the end. But it looks so good for KT. It's just a two for two. But it's messy. Because if not, then by the end of all of this, it will be BLG getting out at, right? Yep. Evil as all oh, lands. Is he going to be in trouble? Oh, they're going to start oh. Nash. Sneaky they're pulling Baron. the trigger. It's the Hex Gates! 28 minutes in, you said it made the game interesting. Chronic, like, you're on point with this. Behind the hands is showing, he's like, all right, we're trying to contest. He flashes over your gal. Now interested in the meat. But they look at this. Know. This is the bigger prize. KT have outsmarted, outthought. BLG caught by surprise while the hands Doesn't is grinning out. from ear to ear. The Baron. Whoa. Oh, Ignite. It doesn't cancel it. All five with Baron. Thank you very much. Any more though, so Elk definitely going to be able to just clear out. And yeah, Bin not really the target that you want to try and dive. So, oh. Flash, wait, Bin, what is he doing? The shove back though, Bin gets the half HP, but the all in, the all out is there. BLG fighting under that inner turret. Going golden, going into GA. Cuz now caught up here as well. Maybe KT weren't expecting the Spanish Inquisition. BLG are chasing them out. Where did that come from, Chronicler? It's been making the magic happen. Finds a thing that I don't know if KT can deal with. Elk has flash GA and ultimate is level 16. So consistently trying to shut down this Zaya is going to be tough. Oh, good pick though. Oh, Onto on Magnusol Muse early. Supports just dead KT. He's gone. Brilliant pick. And that, I think BLG, yeah, just the board. You don't need to fight to the death over this track, guys. <laughs> you BLG. don't need to fight they over will. to the death. It's BLG. They look for the steal, they don't fight now. Keen for the angle, they've got the numbers advantage, but they're looking for the pick. As he goes, Golden BLG, are they in a bad spot? No, the answer is absolutely no, but the healing is absurd. All out over the wall while Keen runs. The little ward outside, so they have a pretty good idea. The BLG isn't actually going for this as Keen, doesn't have flash. Oh, there's a flash again. Bin might be doing it again, but this time it's onto the Aatrox. Mobility, his friend, he gets popped back, and BDD tries to help out his brother, but he gets blasted out. Massive shutdown is aiming. Ulted him, but he's isolated. The wall is not his friend either. He'll take his tower up, though, is on. Disrupts the other back line. Help Goldleaf once again onto Kazu. Flashes in, gets feathered down, but in the backside, aiming is dead, but that GA is all the difference. Elk survives, Cuz is out of there. BLG make it a one for two, has now been once again, has got the blades out, and KT have to run for their lives. I do think it's all over to them. I mean, is it gonna be a 4-0 LPL day or a 3-1? Can LCK get another? It all comes down to this, to round it up as Cuz goes to the engagement. But look, once again, Keen is caught out. Shun finds him, BLG group up while the tanky members go through, but aiming. Is this his clutch factor coming through? He goes golden, he sets up with BDD. Elk is out of there. The flash on. Oh! KT are coming up clutch. But Bin has the swords out again. Stop the Cassante. Can you do it? Lehens runs for the hills. While Kaz is left isolated. Just when you think aiming has done it all. They put him in the bin. And with that, that should be Soul going over to BLG. If they don't just make a mad dash for it, they do still have Skeen up in 20. But is that enough? It's massive. Again, Lahens has to watch here. 15 seconds will count it down. Keen to save the game. BLG with the Baron are going to break the base at the very least. On going to take the Hex Gate. And with a Hex Tech Soul in the oh, back yeah. pocket, we have flipped this game. Enough, Chronicler. On our first day of Worlds, we have sat on the seesaw. We have priority here, and it's K2 who have to walk in. Look at the poke. Lance already taken down fairly low. They have all the vision. Lance goes in, doesn't actually end up working. Cuz, oh, can he get it. in? They're going to flip it, but it's down. Never mind. You can't flip it when you have a Zaya. Cuz just has to run away for now as he flashed out of that before dying and making it 100%. Now, I know what an LCK team would do. But this ain't one. 
It's BLG who with Baron are going to try and force their way in. Keen doing that with the GA. He's confident, but Bin once again on top has been the better top laner as Cuz finds Elk with the feathers have landed once more. A shove back won't save the day, but Lahan's trying what he can do. But the problem is his damage is getting resurrected, aiming repositions. But Elk stands strong. KT started with grins on their faces, but as the ace comes through, it is LPL who will start 4 and 0 here in the Swiss stage at Worlds. It is BLG who will never say die. This game delivered what we expected from a fight between the number two seed. These were some of the best highlights from the world's 2023 Swiss stage day one matchups. Which moment was your favorite? Let me know in the comment section below. This is OP and I'll see you tomorrow. Take care.